Welcome back to Worth the Effort Woodworking. As many of y'all know, I share this 420, 450 square foot shop with my father. I have about half of it that is dedicated to flat work, you know, cabinets and stuff like that. And that's what you generally see in the video. And then about half of it is dedicated to wood turning. I have my lathe right over here. And for all this time, for all these years, we've kept the turning parts very, very separate. I've never used his lathe in all this time we've worked together and I don't really use his tools that much, mainly because we sharpen our gouges differently. So I'm just not used to them. I've occasionally used some of his scrapers and everything like that, but it's amazing because I'm on a one way, which has different threads and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of the stuff doesn't interchange uh, very well. So I stay to my stuff and he stays to his stuff. Uh, I, I'm having some audio issues with the camera uh, and uh, one way right now, it's getting some feedback right there. So I'm gonna start doing some filming over here on his Robust. And he has given me permission to reorganize his area to make it a little bit more camera friendly, meaning visually organized. And he has a lot of tools. This whole thing's filled up right there. I'm not gonna show you any of that but mainly he has lots and lots of gouges. We have all these over here. He has a lot in here. And then he has some right over here. And I would like to organize them in some way. And as all of y'all know, organizing gouges is really complicated. Both he and I have gone through a lot of different setups. This is the latest one for his tools that he uses maybe once or twice a year, but he wants to be able to see them so he they stay top of mind. And you know, just dowels pegged in right here. But if you put this kind of design anywhere close to your lathe, it collects so many shavings. You never get it cleaned up. This last time, dad came up with a really creative way of doing it. He's using these P sections of PVC pipe and he took a normal wire fence, has that little lip right there. He turned it up sideways, and then he has bolted that to the wall, but he has not bolted it flat. It's kind of canted a little bit like that. If you'll notice here, this is the bottom of the shelf, the one with the lip. It is sitting, resting on top of this bar right here, and then it is actually screwed to another identical bar. So that cants it back, a little bit like that. And then he's uh, zip tied all the PVCs, drilling two holes and running a zip tie and doing them to the chain. That way they can be adjusted up and down uh, over time. They aren't permanently set at each one of these heights so he can do different size tools because you know on a short tool you don't want the tube way up here and on a big tool you don't want it too far low because they get kind of tippy. But you'll notice where he put it. He's, it's at a location where you don't really throw shavings a lot unless you're turning the back side of the bowl because the lathe is right here. When he does that one, a lot of times I've seen him take something and throw over these so that the shavings don't collect in here because once again, once shavings get here, they are pretty much always going to be here. It's hard to keep clean. The only way you can actually keep uh, shavings out of it is to put your tools away from where you're turning. So let me also, while I'm at it, go ahead and show you how I store my gouges because I think it might be appropriate for a lot of people out there in smaller shops because I don't have as many gouges as my dad has collected. Oh, FYI, I'm taking reorganizing his area into basically remodeling the whole shop. That's why the mess is everywhere. <laughs> Mine have always been in this stand right here. I built this probably 10 years ago. It houses every gouge that I own. There are extras in here. I don't use them all, all the time. Some of them I probably haven't touched in five years, but they're there right here. What I found is in this setup, I keep it right next to me. It collects shavings, but I can take my air gun and just blow it out. And for some reason, this is really easy to clean up. It doesn't take much. Just like that, it doesn't matter how long the shavings are, they just leave. 
I am going to be making something different in this video, but under the same theme, and y'all can see, learn how I did it. But even before that one, and what I still use whenever I go to shows and stuff like that, is I have a little stool with a holes drilled on it, and you know, it just holds the tools I'm using for that demo. And once again, simple and easy for me, it's right by the lathe, I grab the tool, use it, and put it right back. So the first thing I want to tackle is bulk tool storage. All those tools he has over there, a lot of the stuff in here, and some of the stuff right here that he doesn't use much, I want to keep them in sight, but not in a messy situation. And what I'm thinking is this is one of his longest tools right here. I'm 5'8 and shrinking. He was 5'11 and now he's shrunk down to my size. I am willing to bet if I could just kind of put them right here, all the tips are visible, but really, you know, you very rarely raise your hand up like that to do that one. So I think it would be pretty safe. So if I could just create some kind of ledge right here underneath the shelf, we can store a whole bunch of tools with just the tips showing. Again, this is the longest one. Most of them won't be that way, so maybe this one will be stored way over there out of, uh, out of the way. So my first goal is to make something up here. Now I am winging this. this I'm just bringing you all along so y'all can see my thought patterns and come up with even better ideas, and I'm hoping you'll leave them down below because this is a ongoing problem for all wood turners. But I'm thinking of going and getting some uh, pipes, um, some plumbing, black plumbing pipes. The only problem is those are iron and you never want two different metals touching each other. So I've got to figure out that problem. So yeah, they want like 20 bucks for black iron pipe. So I just grabbed a cheap dowel. It's not going to have to hold that much weight. I just need to figure out how to hold it up here because the back of the gouges are going to be held on this ledge, which is, you know, a good six, eight inches going back to the wall. Now, while I highly suggest you take advantage of the corners of your shop, because A, uh, if you fill that up with stuff, it really does cut, cut down on the sound levels, uh, just a sound wave just kind of bounce around, but it also makes a great place for storing your bowl blanks and stuff like that. But if you don't have anything like that, I imagine you could just hang this from the ceiling the key thing is, I don't think you want this to be able to swing. So I wouldn't do it on chains or anything like that. Uh, I would hate for you to bump it and swing out and all your tools come down and stab what's underneath them or whatever. So right now, I just got to figure out a way to hang it. I'll probably make three brackets so I have some support in the middle. So I'm really happy with the volume of tools this holds. Uh, right now I've got most of the full size tools from dad's collection uh, from there over there. I am kind of thinking I probably should have located this bar a little bit farther forward. The reason why I put it here is because like on the big tools, I didn't want the weight to be on this side. I want it, you know, 90% of the weight to be back here so it's more stable. Uh, but I could have gotten more tools to sit comfortably up there if I'd done that. There are just so many tools that it just barely touches that I really didn't want to mess with. So we'll put those up here. Uh, I don't know. What do y'all think? Uh, what would you do differently? How would you improve this? I will say this. Uh, I was worried about, you know, closing the door and this wall vibrating. 
but with this setup, you can put spring clamps either on the bar or I can put it right here and it kind of locks them all together. So they're not going to be moving around that often. And I got little clamps in back uh, to keep the back from moving around. So this wall could vibrate quite a bit and those aren't going anywhere, especially since they are leaning backwards. So they're not going to come forward or yeah, it's stable. Next up, I'll figure out how to do some stuff here. Dad had a bunch of these magnets. He had some small stuff on there, little bits and stuff like that, which everything he had on all these magnets fit in this one jar. So yeah, I'll try and make better use of that. But we'll come up with something clever. Let me go after that. So in consulting with dad, he liked the idea of having uh, his tools on the smaller tools on magnets because a lot of this is spindle turning tools where the longer tools are more his bowl turning tools. So it did kind of just size wise create a kind of balance there. Uh, but his suggestion was uh, go ahead and just rest it down here and then we could use this for the chuck chucks and stuff like that. He has a lot of chucks. I basically have two chucks for my mini lays and two chucks for the one way. And then we have other stuff and this isn't, I think he has some more stuff somewhere else that I just haven't found yet. I left room for that one. The one thing I want you to note though, all of these tools are basically resting here. I was going to build a slightly canted uh, base, but because we're coming down here, I can just rest them on the, on the workbench and this workbench is uh, not moving. So the weight is handled here. This, these magnets just kind of keep it registered against that one. I did find that I wasn't comfortable with just one magnet with this strength. I mean, it's, these magnets are more than strong enough to hold the tools up by themselves, but it just didn't feel that strong to me. So a lot of these longer ones, you'll see I, I have a double one out there. It basically came down to, I just found kind of a, a height for the tallest ferrule, and that's the lowest I could bring the low one. Same with over here. So if you're doing that, be sure you keep the weight handled by gravity on something solid and just use the magnets to kind of hold it against the wall. But now that we've got dad set up, how about we return to my setup? So my setup, I basically have it organized from spindle turning to bowl turning. Over on this side, I have my, uh, my uh, skews. Uh, then I have my uh, spindle gouges. Then I have a center section with scrapers and roughing gouge and stuff like that. Then I start coming into my bowl gouges and everything like that. Around the edge, I just have small holes dictated for smaller stuff. Again, this has been my setup for a really long time. I have taken my bandsaw off of this table and I'm gonna convert this to this to give me a little bit more room. And also I can put my chucks here. But one thing, one thing I didn't like about this one was its height. Uh, I should have made it a little bit lower because this is not the most stable thing in the world. It's very top heavy. And if you're reaching down, you know, you can see I can be way down here with the tops of my handles and it'd still be very comfortable. So having this low to keep the center of gravity would have been better. But that's basically because it is a trestle table on two legs. There's only two legs here in a very small base. This is a regular table with four legs, so I don't have to worry about the top heaviness. So, uh, I kind of appreciate the height here because even my longest tool, which is my, my uh, one and a half inch skew, when you look at it, how far it's gonna sit down, it's going to leave me storage down below for storing uh, blanks, such as my top blanks and stuff like that, which you know I batch those out by the thousands so I can do a month of turning without having to go back and batch out more. So I think this is gonna work better Plus it, it will hold more tools such as my chucks and other things that I use 
fairly frequently. And since this one is on wheels, I can get it out of the way when I don't want to use it, or I could roll it around to dad's lathe when I turn over there. So I think this will just work out a lot better for me. The key thing is, I now need to go through and find the width of all the ferrules, organize it the way I want here, and then just cut the holes. And the trick to when I cut the holes is kind of wiggling the uh, drill to make the holes a little bit wider. I don't want a very tight fit. I just want these to be able to drop down. I say that there is one disadvantage to this setup, a major disadvantage, especially if you are in a concrete, have a concrete floor, is because a lot of the cheaper tools, for example, this uh, parting tool, which I truly hate, well, they aren't glued in or anchored in or anything. They're kind of a friction fit. And periodically when I drop them in, they'll just go right, the metal will come out of the handle and go hit the ground. So that is the downside of this design. And maybe a benefit of having a little bit higher with something underneath that it will hit so it won't crack the steel instead of just dulling it. Uh, I've only found that a problem on tools that I've bought. Uh, mainly these kind of red die handles, which a lot of people rebadge as their own, the different stores. Uh, haven't had that, uh, only had that happen once with the Robert Sorbys, and those are really the, the brand I started out with. All the stuff I make, uh, I generally dab a little bit of a, a CA glue or something like that, just a little, not much when I'm seeing the handles, if I think the handle is a, a truly tight fit but most of them are tight enough that you have to hammer on them so hard to get them in that they're never coming out. Anyways, time to start drilling holes. Now this whole build is just drilling holes, but one thing we need to talk about is grain. Uh, I built this out of construction lumber. This is a two by 12. So I have over an inch thickness right here. So there is, I do have some leeway over somebody that might be using something like a white pine from the big box store that's started out three quarters of an inch, but probably, you know, five eighths or something like that. And that's fairly thin. If you start drilling holes and the holes are in line, that means that this right here becomes a very weak section of the board along the grain, so it could split. Uh, my design of this table is I have a substructure underneath here, a board running uh, dovetailed into this all the way down, so I'm not worried about that one. I'm just mentioning that for all y'all that might be just you know putting legs underneath the table, or maybe have a solid tabletop and have stretchers going around like a normal table build. This one isn't a normal table build. Uh, so you just have to be careful about lining up the holes and spacing and stuff like that so that, that your table maintains some strength because I'm about to turn it into Swiss cheese. And in my design, because of the substructure, I just drew a box right here, which is bigger than what I have over there. Uh, and that's where I'm going to be drilling all the holes for now leaving a rim around the edge for me to set stuff down in the future or drill future holes for new tools I get.
well, there you go. I still have a few tools to bring over here, but I'm not quite sure where I want to put them. And those will be easy ones. Just drill, you know, a, a quarter inch, an eighth inch hole and be done with them. How I've got it set up is pretty much the same. I have my bowl gouges here, and then I have my bowl scrapers. Here is the parting tool that I really hated. I've done videos on how much I hate this thing. Uh, I will say Carter's and Sons saw that video and they sent me the steel to make my own future uh, parting tool and that'll be an upcoming video. Then right here I have my uh, scrapers that I use for all my boxes, my ingrain scrapers. I then have my roughing spindle gouges. I then have my spindle gouges and then I have my skews. So it goes bowls to skew uh, to spindles all the way across to keep it organized. This center section right here, I had, did put in some of the stuff that I had lined up on the edge. And these are all the uh, tools that go into the tail stocks of both my one way and my jets. They use different size Morris tapers. So that's why I have so many of those. And then I'll probably put those two, those smaller tools just on the edges here. So they hang over. So that's that. I've shown you how I built my preferred setup for my uh, turning tools. Uh, we showed you dad's prior setup, which I really did like the way he had the PVCs set up, but for what we're doing in this back corner, it took up a lot of space. I think I will reuse those uh, whenever I get another tool wall set up over here. And those will be right by the lathe for the tools that we are using at that lathe because you don't need every single tool out. Uh, you don't need all your bowl turning tools if you're making, you know, spindles and that kind of stuff. So just pull the tools you're out, set them up on the PVC rack, put them up when you're done or leave them out for the next time you need to reorganize the shop. Uh, I showed you how Dad had that peg set up, which worked out really well when you didn't have shavings coming over there. And we migrated some of those over to the edge uh, where, well, I'll just show you. These are all the tools that Dad uses uh, in his corings and some carbide scrapers. And then we have his spindle turning tools and his bowl turning tools up there. And some of these are uh, his end grain stuff. And once again, the, the chucks just it looks good and it's easy to find them. And uh, I, one of these is mine, but the rest of them go to the one way. Uh, I'm to the robust and the robust and the one way have different uh, threads so that we, we can't interchange our chucks. That's why there is just or easy to organize them all here. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I mean, it's a topic that I don't know a lot about. Uh, but these are the best options we found. And my number one thing is when we're turning right here and I'm demonstrating, I can put a curtain up to come out over here though. Maybe that tool, it's not perfect. If you have a better idea or ways we can improve it, please leave those down in the message uh, comments below so others can enjoy it. And if you don't think this is gonna work out, tell me a reason why down below. Not that I'm just stupid because that's a given. Well, y'all be safe, have fun, and remember, it's always worth the effort to learn, create stuff, and share it with others.